I think it's out of Mills with Mills Ammunition. Got my fancy Mills Ammunition shirt. You can get yours too. It's my little selfish plug. Uh, www.millsammunition.com. Hope everybody's having a great day. I wanted to, um, been kind of meaning to do a video uh, concerning the recent uh, gun control legislation that's gone through. They call it gun control, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, in late June, uh, our president signed into law the uh, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Um, and I have uh, read said act. It is a lot to go through. Uh, this is, you know, what it looks like. Uh, and it's really a, an amendment to a lot of laws that are currently on the books. It's really what that is. Um, you know, we're from North Carolina, so I also wrote Tom Tillis because only two, 14 Republicans signed it uh, in the Senate, and, and, and two of them were ours here in North Carolina. Um, so I contacted, uh, I contacted our, our senators to figure out what the heck was going on. Um, you know, because I, I don't, I, I'm the same school of thought that most folks are. Right, is that when gun control starts, you know, it, it's just really kind of a, a slippery slope from from there. Um, so I wanted to take plenty of time to understand what the law was. So I wrote to uh, Senator Tillis, and I got a uh, letter back from him. I'm sure it's the one that anyone who asked about it got. So I don't think I'm that special, but um, then I also. Obviously, as an ammunition manufacturer, uh, the biggest um, group that looks after uh, the uh, Second Amendment folks in this country is the NSSF, National Shooting Sports Foundation. So yesterday, or on Monday actually, uh, they had a uh, Zoom call, if you will, um, to get an understanding of, of what that law meant, and I sat through the hour of that. So. I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I do have a pretty healthy understanding of, of what it is. Um, we'll also st uh, talk about um, our good folks in the uh, House Committee uh, on the Judiciary that uh, got through or is bringing legislation out of that committee. Um, that's pretty ugly, right? So that is the they advanced the assault rifle ban of 2021. Um, you know, first of all, I want to start here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of faith, so I have uh, some understandings uh, that uh, maybe some folks don't have, right? What I do know is, is that there's, there's evil in this world. Um, and I was a bondsman in a past life, and I've seen some, some pretty uh, horrific things. Uh, that uh, people have done to one another. And I'm here to tell you uh, that uh, breaking news, right, is that guns don't kill people, people kill people. And these are facts that some folks have a hard time uh, grasping, but they're, they're, they are what they are. And um, I, I, I knew plenty of folks that did very, very bad things, um, went to bed, uh, slept like babies, woke up the next day and, and um, began to do those same behaviors again, right? So, you know, the bottom line is, is none of these things are going to stop people from per per perpetrating violence on each other, whether it's a gun, knife, fist, car, whatever. Um, you know, evil was let into this world a long, long time ago. Biblically speaking, and it ain't this ain't this is not God's world down here. Um, not trying to get super religious on you, but these are just the facts, um, you know. And and uh, I I wish we could figure out how to get get rid of evil, but you know that's not going to happen for for a time that I I'm not sure when it stops, but it will stop. It's not going to be by humans stopping it. Um, so that's, that being said, I, that's kind of my thing with, with gun control, right? Is that, um, you know, you're not, what you really want is the violence to stop, right? And there's laws against violence. People commit those, break those laws anyway. So adding additional laws doesn't stop behavior. Um, 
back at it. So let's look at this uh, most recent bipartisan Safer Communities Act. I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's a pretty solid bill. Uh, I don't even know how much I could call it a, a gun control bill. I think that uh, the president wanted a lot, 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 lot more stuff. Uh, maybe he gets it in this House bill that's coming, but um, you know he 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 President Biden certainly acted like this was a big deal, and I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's a gr I think I hate to say it, but I, I almost think it's a great thing. Um, the bottom line is is it puts a ton of money and resources uh, out for folks that that have mental health needs, and in my humble opinion. Um, most of the time that we see these uh, horrible acts of violence and mass shootings and things, those are folks that are very, very ill, very, very sick. Um, another conversation for another day, but we just don't do a great job of taking care of folks with those needs in this country. It's, it's a shame, and it's, quite frankly, it's a disgrace. So some of this bill is going to help with that, and I'm all for that. I'm, I'm, I'm big on, um, you know, providing folks with with mental health assistance i think that's a huge huge thing uh to me um it's the most important thing you know you look at society uh and you really judge it by how you treat the weakest amongst you right and those are the folks that have mental health is issues those are the elderly those are folks that have been hurt in accident you know what i mean those are folks that need our need our need our help and and we should be judged on how well we take care of the weakest among us and we don't do a great job of it. Um, so let's look at what the law does. So um, a lot of these things I didn't know much about, right? But it increases Section 223 of the Protecting Access to Medical, Medicare Act. So um, it looks like there's some policies that are, that are there right now that assist. Folk. Most of this stuff comes through Medicare um, and, and, and Medicaid. Um, so it's it basically extends some community health programs. Um, so you know what that means specifically, I don't know, but it extends some health care for uh, certain states. Um, it's it also uh, really um, is designed to to create a telehealth um, system um, underneath Medicaid and uh, CHIP, which is the Child's Health Insurance um, Program. Um, the other big, big thing that the, that money is going to is uh, growing school-based care. Um, so there's lots of funds in there to uh, do early diagnosis um, and you know kind of figure out who what folks are having problems at a young age and providing them uh, with care. And those folks are being identified through th through the public school system. So again, I, I think that's I think that's great. Um, it uh, offers pediatric mental health uh, grants again, um, and I'll put some numbers to it at the end. But that's that's stupendous to me. Um, so the other thing is that there's two kind of big issues, right? That folks were a little bit up and up in arms about, and one is is how they change how they look at. Uh, folks that are buying long guns under the age of 21. Um, and again, I think this is a great thing. Um, so the biggest deal now is at this point, if you're uh, 18, 19, uh, and you're 20 up till you're 21, prior to, prior to 21, um, it, the bill is asking states uh, to um, put the information into Nixus uh, which is what happens when you have a background check run um, as deep as 16 years of age. So if you have a crime at 16 years of age that would make you a prohibited person, which is a person who can't buy a gun, um, you can't buy a gun, right? If you've uh, been uh, adjudicated, adjudicated, uh, and this is my la their language, not mine, um, uh, I think it's the mental defect, um, you, you can't own a gun. Um, so these are the same, basically what it is, is, is the, the same things that prohibit an individual from buying a firearm, um, when they are, a, um, so, uh, it's, what happens is the folks that, 
it's now looking at those younger years, right? It's looking at those years. So at 18, the it, it's going to look at what you've done um, as a teenager. Uh, and if, you, if you've gotten yourself in some trouble that would prohibit you from owning a gun, guess what? You can't have one. I'm good with that. I don't care about that. Um, but that, but what it does is I believe it's five years from there. You can, you can, that, that stuff goes away, but you know, anyway, um, the next thing that is, was the biggest part of this bill that people were up in arms about. And I completely understand, um, you know, they have these crisis, what they call crisis courts. Um, and a lot of the states that you would think would have something like that, has something like that. Um, and these are courts that can, you know, New York has one, Illinois has one, just to name a couple. Um, and they can, they can take your guns, um, with, you know, with no, uh, due process is, is the best way to describe that. Right. So you don't have to, you can't defend yourself. You can't have an attorney. You can't question anyone. Um, your guns are taken. Right. Um, that that right there is a problem. That's my biggest thing. Um, is you know these red flag laws, and that's exactly what it is. So what this does is is it a lot takes money, burn grants, B Y R N E grants, to implement state crisis intervention programs. So if you're a state that does not currently have an intervention program, there are funds out there for you to create this these courts. Right. But the most important thing is, is if you're going to take that money, you're going to take that money. You have to uh, run the court with the specific guidelines that the act demands, which, again, is true, um, you know, judis, judul, judicial. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. It's an opportunity to defend yourself. Right. So you can before your guns are taken, um, you can have. Uh, an attorney you can have representation look I'm not saying it's a great thing but um, it's certainly better than, than than what happens in some of these states that already have these courts in place so that was kind of the big hubbub in there um, it the the other part another part of it it increases penalties for straw purchases substantially um, it, it spends a lot of time on straw purchases um, so you know, if you if you get busted for for doing a straw purchase, it's either 15 or 25 years mandatory. Boom, you're cooked. So um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, that doesn't bother me either. Um, so that that's a huge part of it. Um, if you have access to to Nixus, right? You're a gun shop. Um, you now can run. Um, Nixus checks on your employees. Prior to that, you couldn't do that. So that's a great thing. What's wrong with that? That's good. Uh, another huge part of that Nixus check, and people may not may or may not know this, but now um, if you take a gun, right, at your store and you buy a gun from someone who walks in, um, you may, truth be told, you're of course you're going to ask someone if it was stolen, how they come across it, but you know someone telling you something doesn't make it true right you can't always run to the sheriff's office they're not they're not can you imagine if everyone walked in the sheriff's office saying hey is this gun stolen that's not good that the sheriff office ain't going to do that so these records are now going to be 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 in nexus so that gun shops can uh protect the, themselves they can protect the people they're selling to that's a that to me is is awesome um one thing I'm not a super big fan of is, um, and it's from my bondsman experience, and some people might might think I'm crazy, but I, I just know what I know, what I experience. Um, so if you're, if you get, um, you know, if you have an issue with CDV, criminal domestic violence, as, as a misdemeanor, right now you lose your gun rights for five years. Uh, that's a husband, right? A husband. Um you know now it's it's a boyfriend they've extended it to the term and term boyfriend there's some language that describes what a boyfriend is but they've added that on to the to the parcels so you know the biggest thing i have a problem with is in my experience at least in greenville south carolina and greenville county so nine times you know nine times out of ten they they're they're taking the man that's just the way that works um so you know i don't know how fair that is 
Um, so I'm not, I'm just not a big fan of it. You know, I'm not, I'm a huge, not a big fan of criminal domestic violence, but I also realize, um, you know, how those charges really work from a judicial perspective, right? I, being in the trenches, seeing who's getting arrested for it. We made our living off of CDVs, right? So it's in Greenville, South Carolina, it's a $5,000 bond. We do them for $250. You could do five of them a day. Uh, that's not, that's not, um, you know, making the numbers seem higher than they were. That's the way it was. Um, and I'm sure it's still the same because CDV is, is, if you hit someone, then that's a different crime, right? That's no longer a misdemeanor. I'm talking about people hollering at each other, right? Because that's, that's what a, a misdemeanor CDV is, uh, criminal domestic violence. Um, it establishes a federal clearinghouse for school safety. So I think that's a, a, one, a wonderful thing. What that is, is, is basically a, uh, uh, a database of uh, best, practice, best practices. I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, so, you know, our two issues, issues really are the folks being able, you know, looking at their backgrounds, uh, for the younger folks underneath the age of, of 21. I don't have a problem with it. The crisis courts I'm worried about. Um, but, um, you know, at least now they're going to give you some due process. And most of these states aren't, if they haven't had, if they don't have these courts in place, uh, I, I, most of them probably aren't going to add that to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, and here's the other thing. If the states don't want the federal money, they can continue running them however they want. Now, that might, you know, they might end up in front of the Supreme Court one day with a case because uh, they took somebody's gun, their rights away before they've adjudicated them. Um, I think that's a problem. Who brings that to the Supreme Court? I don't know. Um, the biggest thing that happened today is the 21st of July was yesterday um, and that's when uh, the House Committee on Ju Judiciary passed got through the advanced assault ban or the assault rifle ban of 2021 they're gonna bring that to vote this week I I, I hear uh, and guess what there's a pretty solid majority of Democrats um, in uh, in the uh, Congress and that's a that's a the problem if you're pro-gun um, and I tell you that because the House Committee on the Judiciary voted completely along party lines. I don't, I'm not, I'm, I might be off on the numbers, but it was like 23 to 19. All the Democrats voted for it, all the Republicans didn't. Completely, no, no flip flops. So I do not think this bill will have any problem um, getting through the House. I, I think it's a, it's a no brainer and they will sign it, and it's ugly. Um, so it bans the sale, import, manufacture, or transfer of certain semi-automatic guns. Um, these are, uh, I think I'm still good. Um, so these are uh, a gun that can, a semi-automatic gun that can accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of these following features. A pistol grip, a forward grip, Folding, telescoping, detachable stock, grenade launcher, got to watch out for those. I, I, I've owned, I, might, I may or may not have owned an assault rifle in, my, in the past or today. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I do or not. Um, but uh, my point is this. Ain't none of them got a damn grenade launcher on them. Um, uh, barrel shroud, uh, threaded barrel, right? So, right, everyone's going to have, everything's going to have a threaded barrel on it. Um, so fix and, and so the next one is fixed magazines that holds more than 10 rounds. So if it was a gun and it had a fixed magazine, if it holds more than 10 rounds, that's a problem. Bump fire, um, semi-automatic pistols that accept detachable magazines, which is really all semi-automatic pistols or else they would be revolvers. This is the brain power of these folks. Um, so if it has a threaded barrel, done. Um, if it has a second pistol grip, if it has a barrel shroud, detachable magazine other than through the grip, that's, uh, that falls in the band list. Semi-automatic shotguns, a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock. Same kind of rules, right? Pistol, I don't know when that cut off, so we'll go back to semi-automatic shotguns. Um, folding, telescoping, detachable stock, pistol grip, 
fixed magazine with capacity to accept more than five rounds, ability to accept detachable magazine, forward grip, grenade launcher, and revolving cylinder for the semi-automatic shotguns. Um, so this is the real deal. Um, so for all the folks that bought guns, um, new gun owners during this COVID period, um, you know, this, these are, these are battles that, uh, we fought and fought and fought. And, um, you know, since the first assault rifle ban, um, this is, this is the next time, uh, that we're going to have to get on our horse because this is the real deal and it will be in the Senate, um, to be signed, uh, or to be voted upon. So, um, that's a, that's a tough, tough one right there. If it gets through the Senate, um, you know, Biden will sign it, zero doubt. But it's getting through the House. You know that's happening. So what I would tell you to do is, is get on the phone, email, do whatever you can um, to uh, let your representatives, whether they're uh, in the, the House or the Senate, that this is an issue um, because it's, uh, it's going to make a big deal. Because if you own them, hey, they say, boy, lucky, you're lucky, you got them. You get to keep them. Aren't you the lucky one? But you can never transfer them. You never sell them, right? So if you pass and your your goes to your wife, I don't know what they do. Do they have to turn them in? I don't know. If you want to give your your son or your daughter uh, one of these guns, are they do they are you allowed? I don't know. Um, so I'm running out of time here, but uh, I just wanted to kind of bring folks up to date. Uh, and uh, I think this is a very, very important issue. www.millsammunition.com, veteran-owned, family-run. Come get you some Mills Ammunition. Have a great rest of your day.